Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. Hope you're having a great day. I'm having a great day. And if you've only just got up, I hope you have a great day. I hope you can tell this is a self-portrait. I painted it in Art Studio Pro. However, I'm not going to talk about uh, this painting today. What I want to do is tell you a story and it was prompted by a comment on one of my videos asking me um, if I thought I would be painting on a tablet and putting YouTube videos up. Uh, did they think I would have thought I'd be doing that 35 years ago? And they asked me to comment on it briefly, but I thought, you know what, there's enough, I've got enough um, information to make a full video about this. So I've ended up pretty much telling you my life story of how technology has uh, affected it. So I hope you enjoy this video and let's just get straight into it. So I just want to read out the post that um, prompted me to make this video. Uh, it says, hello, Steve Elliott. Please consider talking briefly about this thought. Imagine yourself back 25, 35 years ago or similar, maybe also 10 years ago, and then consider your back then self. Would you have been able to imagine that you would do this YouTube thing with an electronic painting device back 30 years ago when there was no iPad and no YouTube and no nothing. I mean, we had art, we had paintings and we had love, but we had no iPads. Please talk about this briefly in one of your future videos. That will be very helpful for people looking back at 2019 in 30 years ago from now. Thanks in advance. And I thought that was an absolutely brilliant comment. And I don't want to talk about it briefly because I've got a lot to say about this because uh, I want to uh, convey my old story uh, about technology and how it's affected my life. So I thought I'd make an old video of it. So here it is. Um, I think the first time I even considered technology I would be a 15-year-old lad in the school playground. And back back in those days, uh, there was no such things as DVDs, uh, CD players, and um, video recorders. So you, and there was definitely no streaming media or anything. So if you wanted to watch something on telly, uh, or on TV, I should say, not telly, uh, you would have to look at a uh, magazine, find out when that show you want to see was on, and sit down in front of the telly and watch it. And if you missed it, you'd have to wait for the TV channel to um, broadcast it again. And I remember uh, sitting on a wall in the playground, uh, we had um, cassette recorders. We used to record music on cassette, so we'd record the top 20 uh, records on a Sunday afternoon and then play them in a week and our cassette recorders. And I remember sitting on this wall thinking that would be, uh, it would be brilliant. And talking to my mates, discussing it, wouldn't it be really so cool if we could record a TV show like we can record music and just watch it whenever we want? So that was the first time that technology struck me. It was about three years later we had um video recorders betamax and vhs recorders if anybody remembers them so that was my first uh, thought on technology i then or the first thought i remember oh i've got another one even earlier when i was 10 years old i went to a science museum the school took us to a science museum in london and um i saw a color television they had this color television and there was, it was just a still picture on it of a red rose. And I thought, wow, that would be so cool if we had a colour TV. Um, it was years later, actually, before we actually got a colour TV. So that's the earliest memory. I stand corrected. And then the cassette thing and recording videos was the second. I then went to work uh, and I left school and I got a job as... A, uh, a compositor 
So what a, a compositor works at a printer's. And if you've seen any old cowboy movies where they would go into the newspaper office and there'd be a guy there setting type by hand and he would pick, be picking up each letter and uh, setting the newspaper for the day to print. That's what I used to do as an apprentice. I would hand set type. And because I was apprentice, I weren't allowed to use any of the machines. I had to set everything by hand. And there was this big, large room with about five compositors that worked in there. And we each had our own workstation. And we had uh, the fonts that we had available to us was Helvetica, Universe, Times Roman, and Bodoni. And that was about it. And each of these fonts had its own case that it was stored in. And there was a shelf, a series of sh a shelves, or a sh series of drawers, I should say, uh, in this case. And at the top, the top drawer had six-point type. And then it progressively went down to 6, 10, 12, 14, 18, 24. And right at the bottom, there was 72-point type. And you would take out the um, tray and take that to your workstation where you'd have all the alphabet set out and then you could set the type. And um, for those of you that are interested, the um, some of the cases were splitting off and you could put the... Uh, capital letters above the tray of lowercase letters to make it more compact to work and that's where the term uppercase and lowercase comes from because you physically would have the le the uh, small letters below the capital letters which sat above it so we had these huge wooden drawers with all of these fonts in and if you wanted to put a, a metal box if you wanted to print a, a line under a, a text or put a a box around some text you would actually cut lead strips uh, to the length of the line you wanted to um, put the uh, line in or the box around the text and if you wanted an image it would somebody would take a photograph and then it would go off to um, a specialist company that would make a lead reversed image of it that you could then print and then we would put all this together in a big metal uh, frame called a chase and send that off to the printers and I worked there a couple of years and uh, I, I enjoyed it but I um, didn't finish my apprenticeship I actually uh, quit to uh, go off and be a um a musician in a band. I, want, I was a guitar. I was a lead guitarist in a band, and I packed my apprenticeship up to do that. We had a lot of fun with that. But anyway, that's an old other story. So um, the, I'm telling you about this sort of antiquated technology, which was um, uh, it's quite common. There's lots of printers around in those days that worked in that way. This was back in the 1970s. Uh, but they don't exist anymore. There, there, there are a few. There's sort of real specialist um, companies that do letterpress printing. But uh, so all the newspapers used to be letterpress. But it's all it's all changed. All the technology's changed, and it's all computerized now. Obviously, so that's all gone. And um, the next, so I'm telling you this story because the next time. I was blown away by technology was a few years. I'm moving on 10 years from after working at the printers. I'd, I'd been off to, I'd, I'd done lots of other jobs, including painting and decorating. And, um, I went off to train as a teacher and I became a lecturer uh, in painting and decorating, believe it or not. So I used to do all that sort of fancy rag rolling and, marbling and all that kind of stuff and traditional decorating and paper hanging and I, I went to a university to learn how to paint and I was introduced to uh, computers there that, that I saw my very first computer in 1984 and I would have been about 27 years old so that was the first time I saw a computer and I signed on to a computer course because I thought oh, this would be quite interesting but I didn't learn a lot there the guy was pretty lazy and he just left us to our own devices we didn't really do a lot so I wasn't 
I did, I really did enjoy messing about with them, but it wasn't the best teaching experience or learning experience I had. But what it did do, it it gave me uh, an edge when I actually got a job in education. I was one of the few people that wasn't scared of computers because I'd been on this course and I was enthusiastic about teaching and everything. So I embraced the computer technology. So they sent me on loads of courses and they sent me uh, on this particular workshop one day to look at this desktop publishing software and it blew me away because um, what I saw was somebody that was could take a photograph, scan it into the PC, position that on the screen, take some text, let the text flow around the photograph and they made a worksheet and hand out uh, to use in a class and that hit me like a ton of bricks where we was going with technology because all of a sudden going back to the printers that I worked at a place called Derby Printers this old floor we had the old top floor of this building which was the composing department with four or five fonts all of that all of that stuff the chasers, the frames, the workstations was all compressed and put into this one square box that was a computer. And I just knew then that was the writing on the wall for the printers. I thought, you know, who's going to go to a printer? You can do so much with this. The printers weren't brilliant back in those days. That was, um, well, not the, the cheap, uh, affordable ones. So although the computers were doing quite uh, funky stuff with the designs, the printers available weren't brilliant. We had these dot matrix printers and they weren't too cool. So you could, when you printed stuff out um, in a educational environment, it still looked like an handout. But it blew me away that this old composing department had been put in this box. So that was... Um, the next point uh, that I realised that computers were beginning to have a massive in impact on uh, everyday life and working life. So I continued to work at this college, and uh, I was uh, I sort of got promoted and stuff, and I was asked to run a sign writing department. So. Um, I helped set up this sign writing course with another lecturer and it was traditional painting. So we was doing lots of hand painting fascia boards and pub signs and uh, lots of designs and learning to draw um, letters by hand and all that kind of thing. And um, at the same time, I was asked to write an MVQ in sign writing with the uh, sign writing association. And a lot of it was computerized we got vinyl graphics so i um decided to uh, get involved in this obviously because i was into computers and everything and looked at and started to research the computer side of it we bought a uh, computer and a plotter for cutting out letters for the college and we started to make signs uh, with these with this computer and again, I thought, this is the writing on the wall, pardon the pun, for the sign writers. This is an old new industry booming. And I've, I've got a, a twin brother who was, all, who was followed a similar sort of line as me of industry. And he, he, we both were very into sign painting. And while I was working at the college, we'd set up a, a small sign business not too serious, just doing uh, small and painted signs and things. But I was sort of straight away realised that this brand new industry uh, where they were using cut letters to make signs was a winner. So I said to my brother, we've, we've got to get into this. This, this could be uh, something really big. So we put together a business plan, went to the bank. We borrowed enough money to buy a PC and a plotter, and the PC had got Windows 3 on it. It had to have Windows 3, version 3. And it was the first Windows version that looked like a Mac. It had got like a this graphic user interface. 
Anyway, we never looked back, or, well, I did, because I dropped out of the sign industry to concentrate on the teaching, but my brother still runs that sign business today, and he does no hand painting signs, it's all computerized graphics, and he, and he's progressed into doing printing, and there was, we was doing, and in fact, I did go and work for him for a, a couple of years after I finished teaching, uh, I don't do that anymore, but we was doing 40-foot trailers with huge... Uh, prints on so just to recap briefly the realization that computers were now having a massive impact on things with the desktop publishing uh, software that i saw that was about 35 years ago and the sign industry uh when the um vinyl cut letters came in that was about 30 years ago so 35 35 35 to 30 years ago i was really really seeing huge changes in uh, technology affecting my um i'll say business life or working life and personal life as well i suppose because i was getting into computer games a bit i was now teaching it at the college and i sold the guitar that i used to play when I was when I said I packed up working for uh, the printers the as a compositor and I had a Fender Stratocaster black Stratocaster 1970s guitar and I actually sold that to buy my first computer so I could do work at the college so computers and technology technology have always um, well since my uh, late twenties and mid thirties have played uh, a huge part in my life. Um, then we sort of come to the. Um, I, I guess I'm now going back twenty years, so jump forward another five years, and the internet was on the scene. So I thought, well, oh, this internet look. In fact, it was my brother that got into the internet before me, and he says, "You need to check this internet out. It's like." really it's it's quite interesting so i said okay so everything was on like 56k kilobyte modems and everything was really slow so uh, i looked at it and i thought i could build a website i know i could so i started looking at how to make one and i made a, a watercolor painting website and i put that online and uh, i had uh, in those days you put how many people visited your site as a little counter on the front home page and you always had a guest book for people to sign and i had a lot of comments really nice comments on this because i had a, a free tutorial there was like 10 lessons on watercolor painting how to paint watercolors in landscapes and i had that on there and one day i went uh, i was just checking the site and it had only been up a, a couple of months and my comments, well, the own page had gone from like 300 views to 50,000 overnight. I thought, oh, there must be a bug in that. There's something wrong with it. And um, I looked at the comments and there was just pages and pages and pages of comments. So I started to read through the comments. And one of them said, uh, oh, I found your website through the sunday times now the sunday times is like a massive newspaper in the uk and it was a obviously a sunday publication um probably the most prestigious newspaper there is and it was in in the actual educational supplement so i went straight down to the news agent picked up a copy of the sunday times and there was this article this complete article on my website saying go and visit it because they've got this new section in the newspaper talking about technology so all of a sudden my website was getting thousands of hits uh i was a complete clown really because I, I didn't although i was doing all this technology i still hadn't grasped the importance of the internet and what you could do with that and I, eventually i just closed it down but before i did because i just got bored with it but before i did the principal at the college where i was working and who read the sunday Times, saw my website um obviously went and had a look at it came 
into my classroom on the Monday when I was teaching these sign painters. And I thought, that's odd. I've never seen him before. <laughs> he doesn't normally come and talk to me. And he just introduced himself and went away. Anyway, he did that three times that week. Came into my class, just to have a look around and everything. And then he offered me a job as the web designer for the college. He said, we want to get into this. Will you be our web designer? And I, and I actually said, because... Um, call me crazy but I said I will but I you're gonna have to go through I, I want it to be a proper um, interview process where you interview me for the post and everything he said well you might not get the job then I says, well you know I don't care that's what I want to do because we'd had a lot of trouble at the college where um, people were would had been sacked for um employing other people and giving them uh, favorable jobs because there was the friends and stuff like that so I didn't want to get caught up in that so we went through this interview process and I got the job so that was how the internet uh, 30 years ago totally transformed my life from being a teacher to a web designer because I did the web design until I finished working at the college which was about eight years ago I guess and uh, I had a great time and I learned a lot about that so again, technology was having a massive impact on me. And I, I was always like into new technology and I was hanging around with, with techies in the IT department that were into technology. So I bought a first generation iPad. And this, I don't know how long ago that would be. Maybe eight, ten years ago or something like that. And I bought two apps for it. I bought Procreate and I bought art rage and i have to say i never looked at procreate i opened it closed it and didn't use it again until two years ago because it just didn't feel natural to me art rage on the other hand uh i loved straight away and i hadn't got a style you couldn't get uh styluses with the first ipad or the stylus i bought was just like a a pencil with a rubber on the end that I use so there was no touch sensitive controls with it or anything and the pictures were really small but I did some really nice drawings and to answer the question right at the very beginning that was the first time I realized that you could do real art on a computer and um I didn't take it serious because I didn't have a touch sensitive stylus. I did some nice drawings. I did one or two good drawings and paintings of friends and things. And I really liked Art Rage. I have to say, that Art Rage, I don't think has changed at all since that in eight years. Uh, doesn't appear to be any new features. So they really need to uh, get on board and and do something with that app because it, eight years ago, it was cutting edge. And uh, I really liked it. And that was um, when I realized that it's coming. It wasn't there yet, but it's coming. And then two and a half years ago, I bought my first iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil. And within, with, I reckon within three weeks or so, I uploaded my first video onto YouTube because I could do so much with it. So I hope that answers the question of um, did I see um, myself using an iPad and making YouTube videos 35 years ago. 35 years ago, no, I didn't. I definitely did not, but I knew that technology was changing at a rapid rate and changing the world as we know it with lots of different industries and things 10 years ago i knew that i would be able to paint with an ipad pro well not with an ipad pro because they didn't exist but i knew i would be able to paint on a tablet of some um nature so i completely missed out on the wacom and PC experience I could have probably got into it a lot sooner so that's it I really hope you've enjoyed this video I've had a lot of fun reminiscing and 
um, talking about my history. I hope you've enjoyed the painting as well. If you have uh, liked this video, big thumbs up. As always, it's much appreciated. Please share it with all your friends. If you're new to the channel, uh, please consider subscribing and checking the bell so you get notified of all my videos as soon as they come out. And hopefully I will see you all in the next one. Bye.